Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm going to pick up uh, talking about examples eight and nine that I did in a prior video, but I wanted to, to go back and do an energy bar chart for both of those. Also, I wanted to point out that I'm wearing my favorite scientist shirt here. You can see Professor Honeydew and Beaker there. All right, back at it. You should be looking at my screen, and I forgot to make it full screen. I'll go ahead and do that now. And now that you've had a chance to see my Muppet shirt, I'm going to turn off the video and you can just go straight to seeing the work on the screen. There we go. And so we did this problem when we found that the shell went 1,310 meters instead of 5,000 meters when it was launched straight up. And so if it's launched at this angle, what, what does the energy bar chart look like? Well, at the beginning, it has only kinetic energy, right? And then when it gets to the top, it still has kinetic energy. Remember, I made that mistake there. I accidentally crossed it out, but fixed it. So it has kinetic en energy, but it also has gravitational potential. So we can fill that in here. We can say at the beginning, as some amount of kinetic energy, one, two, three, four, five, just to match what I did in a prior video, and no spring energy and no gravitational potential energy. It was in free fall, and so gravity was the only force acting, and so it was, um, there's no work done by non-conservative forces. And then at the peak, there's, let's say, three bars of kinetic energy, and then two bars of gravitational potential energy. Now the exact amounts here aren't important, but, but this is three and this is two and this is five. And so it is important to recognize that this part should be equal to this part. And so these first four columns, those are the first four terms in your conservation of energy equation and these are the last three terms. And so if you look at the conservation of energy equation, the equal sign comes right after that work by non-conservative forces. And so that's why this total needs to equal this total. Now we'll look at this problem for a bullet shot straight up into the air. And this one, there was air resistance acting on it. And the initial was right when it came out of the gun. And the final was when it was at the peak. We'll look at the energy bar chart for that. Similarly, we can have, let's say, kinetic energy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just picked seven randomly just to do something different. It had no kinetic energy at the beginning and there's no springs involved. At the end, it did not have any kinetic energy. It had some gravitational and there was no spring involved. And so it had some, some gravitational, but there was work done by non-conservative forces. And recall that the displacement was upward and the force of air resistance was downward. And so there's a 180 degree angle between them. And so the work by non-conservative forces is equal to the force of air resistance times D times the cosine of 180 degrees. And recall that cosine of 180 is negative one. So the work term is gonna be negative. And so we'll put some amount of work here, one, two, three. Okay, so that's negative. And so if this is seven, and that's zero, and this is negative three, that means this needs to be one, two, three, four, such that these four terms are equal so the total of these three terms. All right, so that's just reviewing and, and going into uh, detail on the energy bar charts on those two problems. Now we're gonna move on to a new problem. It's example 10. And so for those of you students that are in my class, you have this in your packet. So this is a sled that is given a kick and the sled moves, has an initial speed of two meters per second and there's friction acting and we're supposed to figure out how far it moves. Now we could use 
kinematics and Newton's second law of motion to do this, uh, but we're not going to. We're going to use work energy considerations. So one thing we can do is we can draw a sketch. We have the ground level and the uh, thing was here. And this is when it had a speed of two meters per second. And then it ends up over here. And this is when it has a velocity of zero because it says comes to rest and it travels some distance d here. There we go. And the force is acting on it. We've got normal force and we've got the weight at the force of friction, and it's kinetic friction. And you might think, oh, we should put the force of the kick in there. But we need to be really clear on what we mean by our initial position or our initial state and our final state. The initial state is when it's going two meters per second, and that is right after the kick. And so we're not going to include that force. That force does not act between our initial and final states during any portion of that time between the initial and final, we, we want to have all the forces identified, but the kick was just prior to that. We circle the non-conservative forces, and so we have two of them. The work diagram, so this, this was a free body diagram, the work diagram for the normal force looks like this. That's a very crooked line, sorry about that. It's a 90 degree angle, so the work done by the normal force is zero, and then the friction, draw that, and we see that there's a 180 degree angle between them. All right, so this dashed line is the ground level, but is also the place where the gravitational potential energy is zero, so we can get rid of that and that because it did not change, change height at all. There are no springs in this problem at all. Um, so we don't need those terms. There is no kinetic energy at the end. And so all we're left with are two terms. We can say one half mvi squared equal, oh, I'm sorry, plus, gotta figure out how to use the eraser in this. We'll say plus the force of friction, which gets a lowercase f, K times D times the cosine of theta, which is 180 degrees, and that's equal to zero. Um, I will draw, I will write out my second law equation here for the y direction. So normal force minus weight equals zero. So the normal force is equal to the weight. Now remember, we did this dozens of times, the normal force is not always equal to the weight. Think back to chapters four, five, and six. However, in this instance, it is equal to the weight. And then we also know that the friction is equal to mu k times Fn. And so then we also know that the normal force is equal to, um, I'm sorry, that the friction force is equal to mu k times w. Okay, so that's lowercase w, not to be confused with capital W for the work. All right, so one half mvi squared plus, now for friction, I'm gonna put mu k times fn, and then d, okay, a lot of times people will forget one of these terms in here, and, and D is often the one that gets left out. So just take your time, make sure you get all these parts in here. And then we can say one half MVI squared plus UK. Now I'm gonna substitute in the weight here, and weight of course is equal to MG, and then D cosine 180 degrees equals zero. We can divide everything by mass, and Therefore, we're left with this equation, 
and we can easily then solve that. Now we were given the mass up here, but if this problem didn't include the mass, we would still be able to solve it. And so then we solve, and I'm not going to have room to put in all of the algebra and substitution, but I think I've done enough for you to be able to handle it from here, and it's approximately 2.04 meters. As far as the energy bar chart, we simply look at our equation here. We say, oh, well, there was kinetic energy initial, uh, was sum. How many did I do? One, two, three, four, five bars. And there was work by non-conservative forces. One, two, three, four, five. And again, I didn't have to do five. I just needed to make these the same magnitude, with this being positive and this being negative. And then the rest of these are all zero. And as mentioned earlier, the sum of the first four things has to equal the sum of the last three things. So add these up, five plus negative five is zero. And of course, add up those and that's zero. And that's what this conservation of energy equation, equation is saying. All right, that's it for this video. More next time.